Hello everyone and welcome back to Two Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video we're going to attach the propulsion unit to our large ship in orbit, the St. Louis, and we are going to boost it up, hopefully, to a high orbit where it, it's sort of like the same orbit that it would capture back into on a return from Mars or from the Moon or stuff like that. So it'll have a low periapsis but a high apoapsis. This will also be the location where crew will be taken off of it and put onto it because we're not going to be having crew sit on it while it's boosting itself up because that could entail many passes through the radiation belt because we will be using ion engines since we are payload capped as it were by the Orion carrier plane we are going to need to be efficient about the propulsion that we use for our ships and that means nuclear and ion so this is our propulsion section and I originally mocked it up with procedural parts, I'll show you that in a bit, but then decided that it would be good to model it. Actually this uh, piece is the sun shield that was originally for the ASUS depot for ULA. I made the ASUS depot and the sun shield went with it. I have just sort of resized it to make it part of this, and in this case it's a radiation shield. Uh, because we have a lot of radiation going on in here and uh, maybe we just want to shield it a bit <laughs> you know uh, yeah people should not be going near this definitely not because we have two nuclear thermal propulsion units and these are according to NASA what they had in a report in 2019 so all the stats are according to that I, I ignored a Timberwind 11 that's just because of the model I use the same model as a Timberwind model but that is not the stats of the engine. 3.32 uh, tons, 111 kilonewtons, and 875 second ISP. And we've got 60 ignitions on them right now. And we have two of them here. Uh, they are heavy, like the 3.32 tons, so that's pretty heavy. But then we also have the ion units. Now the ion units cannot rely on the NTPs for power. You might have thought that they might, but NTPs are not bimodal, meaning a bimodal NTP would provide electricity as well as thrust, but most of them don't, and certainly the ones in the NASA architecture do not. So we have to have additional reactors, which are these little like R2-D2 units or whatever. Uh, these uh, sort of things are our reactors, actually. Uh, they are units that are by uh, USNC, and USNC is the Ultra Safe Nuclear Corporation. Yes, that's what they're called, Ultra Safe Nuclear. They're, they're real. They are actually working on nuclear thermal propulsion, and they have products, and they have these kinds of reactors, and in this case, uh, these are each 100 kilowatt reactors. So we certainly want to put them behind the radiation shield. They are actually not as powerful as the one in the actual NTP unit. Those would have to be much more powerful than the 100 kilowatts, but they're more than enough to run the ion engines, hopefully. Uh, assuming I'm right, it says max power input 102 kilowatts. That's what that translates to. So each one of these pods has 200 kilowatts and that should be enough. So this is uh, independently powered. It doesn't need to rely on our solar panels because boy, do the solar panels have enough of uh, time just powering the HAB, right? We've had a lot of power problems. And hopefully this will help those power problems, but we'll see. Uh, so, and then we have the ion units. These are from Lackluster Labs, the models are. Otherwise, I think everything else here is modeled by me. So anyway, otherwise the big tank over here is the Xenon tank, and we're not filling it up yet, otherwise we'd be over over mass for the Orion carrier plane. The orange tank in the middle is the hydrogen tank. It's all one piece. So there's a hydrogen tank with 37,000 liters and then a xenon gas tank around it as a torus. And we also have a control unit. That's this part here that's built in. And then of course the docking port. The RCS is also built in. And the RCS fuel, the MMHN Mon 3 that we have here would be inside these triangular sections that are molded in. And so that's how it is. Yep. So basically, uh, aside from the engines uh, and the docking port, there's all one part. That's one reason I wanted to model it. It just looks a little bit sloppy with the procedural parts, unfortunately. Uh, so if you haven't seen the sun shield before, it's deployable. Oops, I didn't want two of them. Uh, it's deployable. And so extend sun shield, and it acts like a radiator. So it's going to be like that on the back end. 
and hopefully that's convincing enough. As far as mass is concerned, you can see it's 42 tons, and the, just the dry mass is quite hefty for this module. If we uh, dump all the propellants here, you can see it's 20.6 tons, so more than half of it's just dry mass. Uh, so hopefully that'll accommodate any sort of radiation shielding. If we take off the engines, uh, you can see it's uh, actually a little bit light, I feel, but maybe it's okay. 9.326 tons, and then if we add the fuel, uh, again, we were just looking for about that much xenon gas. 30-ish mm, tons, 30.9 tons. So, yep, we are going to try this out and see if it works the way we want to. The burn times are going to be wonderful. Uh... Right now it's only 1 minute and 42 seconds, but that's without the rest of the fuel. And this is a very small amount of fuel, this 37,000 liters. So the burn time is probably going to be a lot. And then the ion burn time is going to be impressive. Uh, but uh, that is also dependent on uh, KSB Interstellar and whether we can properly time warp during that. Yeah, a part of the time it takes to do these episodes, a large part of the time, is just making these new parts that I want. So that is one of the rubs. Okay, uh, th this is actually already mounted onto the carrier plane, but let's just take a look at the, the mock-up. So this was actually the mock-up for that, and you can see, I mean, I use these, uh, it's a nice texture for these xenon gas tanks, but it's not as good as having a toroidal tank or anything like that, and of course we can't get that normally. Uh, we don't have many toroidal tanks, you really have to model that specifically. And this was the hydrogen tank, which is, was a bit small because we had to accommodate the xenon gas in this odd form factor. And the ion engines were just sort of stuck back there, and we only had one engine because it's weird to try and fit two on something like this. So there's a whole bundle of issues trying to make it modular, the way KSB ought to be, right? Legos. So trying to be as Lego-like as possible didn't quite work out. So made a new part, and we'll see about launching it. So I think I'm going to further reduce the xenon gas in here because it's going to be a little bit unwieldy for this particular stack to have a 42 ton payload, I think. I think that's going too far. So, yeah, let's bring this outside and see how it goes. Yeah, I might have forgotten to mention the reactors that we have on here are the same ones that we're using on the ISR unit currently on the moon. So we're just using four of those. The ISR units each have one. So we're putting th these to a lot of use. I hope they actually make them. Turn it up. Now say it's on. Ignition and launch. And we have a limited amount of time to test all this stuff. The Earth to Mars window is coming up. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. And I think we just hit max Q right there. Oh, shoot, I forgot to go to the right inclination. I totally forgot to go to 75 instead. Well, we could probably correct it. Let's get in to the right place. I lined up assuming we we're gonna go heading 75, but I forgot to tell it to do heading 75. Anyway, we are late for the roll now. Okay, in space. And shut down at 4000 separation. Switch. Okay, fairings. Oh, wrong way around. Shoot. Okay, and RCS and control from here and ignition. Okay, so I ended up putting myself into a sort of a lopsided orbit. Um, maybe that'll help in the long run because we need to correct inclination because I didn't start out going at a heading of 75 so we ended up a little bit off more off than I'd like we don't have a whole lot of delta V though so we'll see this is a heavy load for this particular stage so we haven't done a good job of that 
the St. Louis is behind us, so being in a higher orbit isn't completely bad. Yeah, the stage can't really correct all of it on its own. We're going to have to use the power unit to do the rest. And I guess we're going to test out whether it can do ion engine burns, maybe. A little bit earlier than expected. We'll do what we can with the star stage 2. And then proceed from there. Okay, ignition. Well, we'll save the rest for its return. So... Okay. Well, let's get this to push itself away. Well, the RCS works. Keeping in mind it's built into the model, so... Mm, nope, not what I wanted. Okay, and you certainly have enough to deorbit. Okay, yep, well, it's a little bit low, but it'll handle it. So now, well, we need to unlock the xenon gas. Okay, 11,000 meters per second. The problem is the time. Now, is that really the time? I sure hope not. Oh, it has no MLI. I definitely put MLI layers. That's a problem. Hmm. Um, it's using xenon gas. But I don't know what kind of thrust we're going to get. And ion engine ignition. Uh, micro newtons. I don't know why we have micro newtons. Why do we have micro newtons? Well, let's just check what KSP interstellar. 400 kilowatts. Yeah. I don't know why this max 8 point uh, 5.82 kilowatts instead of what it's supposed to have. But besides that. The power demand is only 2 watts. And that doesn't... that's not right. <laughs> that's not right. We want many, many times that. Alright, let's say, let's say we shut those off. And we try to use the nuclear unit to get to where we're going. I can always figure out something with the configurations some other time, but we need to get to our destination, so we're going to use the 624 meters per second afforded by the hydrogen here to do it, hopefully. Now I use these same units, the ion engine units, in the solar system tourism series. I note that there's no megajoules here, so that might be a problem. Maybe once we link up with the ship It'll be all right, who knows. I guess we can extend the sun shield and activate the radiator. That is cooling it off, the heat penetration is going down, and the boil off loss is going down too. So, good times, at least that works. Okay, we have an approach into render range. And we're trying to approach a little bit closer here. Okay, I think from the looks of things we are approaching from the correct side. So that'll save us some trouble. Well, shoot, we lost comms just right here. Again, a good thing I wasn't aimed directly at it or anything. We we're just going to float right past, but certainly not ideal. We'll have to set up again. Technically, Smart ASS can still do stuff, I think, but we're not going to take advantage of that right now because mainly it's all about translation. A surprisingly long blackout period, especially since we have a relay probe right in front up there. 
once again, I think I've underdone the built-in comms to these units. They should be able to communicate at least to our orbital communication satellites, but apparently not. Okay, resetting. Apparently these little commutrons on the vessel aren't relays, I guess. Oh, we docked just as we lost comms. And uh, I guess the whole thing lost comms. Really though? <laughs> but anyway, let's get to where we have comms. Okay, that was, that was short. Okay, well let's control from the right place and then see what kind of delta V's we have. Well, we'll have to enable crossfeed through the port. Through all the ports. Okay, so with these two tanks and what little hydrogen we have in the propulsion unit, we've got 2,478. So that's not enough, of course, to get anywhere except high orbit and then we can refuel. But we were sort of hoping that the ion engines would have something too. Ooh, here we go. Now we've got five days. I don't understand why. <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't understand why with the propulsion unit on its own, it had like many years and didn't seem to have enough thrust. But now it says we have a whole 0.73 kilonewtons and we've got the 102. I guess it needs the megajoules for KSB Interstellar to like it. And the megajoules came with the solar panels out of all things. Now see, they have megajoules built in. So if you don't have solar panels, you can't use them? Uh, the ion engines? I don't know. Maybe I should just add megajoules to the reactors. But all right, so we can do some with the with the xenon gas and the ion engines. So yeah, and that delta V isn't great right now, but if we, it depends on priority, which one we use first, the nuclear engines or the ion engines. If we use the ion engines first, we get 2,700 with the nuclear. If we use the nuclear engines first, we get 2,478 meters per second with the nuclear engines and 3,246 with the ions. So it's sort of a trade-off, but all together we get 5,700 or so. We're going to boost this up now and verify that everything works out, but maybe we should boost up sort of in line with where we're going to want to go for Mars, right? I wanted to test this around the moon, but we're probably going to go straight to Mars considering the time, the 58 days. Let's see what Mike Jeb has to say with the maneuver planner. Mm, lowest delta V. Uh, not the two-year one, though. Let's say around here-ish. Lowest delta V. That's 4,500. Departure in 67 days. I... I mean, that's nice looking, though. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice transfer, 212 days. I can't argue too much with that. Maybe we just have a bad opportunity. I don't know, the... Descending node and ascending node seem to be in a good place. Let me see what happens if I plot it, but I have to plot it like many, many, many orbits later. Oh, okay, the descending node is completely uh, uh, that, you know, perpendicular to where we would like it to be. So that's the problem. That's why it's co going to cost us a lot on this particular one. I think the 2026 one was good, if I recall, or was it 2024? But this 2022 one isn't that good. I guess that's why not many people are sending Mars missions this time around, I've noticed. Uh, probably for the best. It's not one of the better opportunities. Oh, is the moon getting in the way? Yep, we'll, we're going to have a bonus moon encounter there. So if we do it this way, the problem is we're going to need to do a mid-course adjustment that corrects that inclination, and that's gonna cost us basically we're gonna end up spending four thousand five hundred one way or another so we might as well take the mechjeb plot so we want to end up like that no that's totally thrown off that thing just turning 
messes with the node. Well, that we're going to boost up here, making sure we're controlling from the right side. Okay. And we'll see how it goes. So let's make sure also that we have some good comms for a while. It's a little bit stretched there, but we've got an, uh, that location might be a little bit too far north. I don't know. Well, now everything will take more effort to get to it. So that's going to be a whole other arrangement. We have to develop the vehicles and everything to make sure it works out. We've lost comms. <laughs> We need more commsats, and maybe we need to bring those in lower. I don't really get why we lost comms, though. We seem to have a line to that relay probe. Right? That's what it's telling me here. Aren't they relay probes? Let me check their antennae after this. We'll see. Okay, let me just check with MechJeb that this is going the right way. Let's reset. I like that area. Lowest. Yep, it costs less by about the amount that we paid, so it's going well. Now let me check on this relay probe to see whether it's an actual relay probe. I mean, this is one of my custom-made relay probes. They're supposed to... it has power! Perpetual... it doesn't really tell me though. I don't actually know how to verify from here that this thing is a relay probe, as opposed to just communicating on its own. It sure isn't doing the job. So I don't know. We might need to just use some of the other dishes. Instead of using these custom ones, I'll just use some of the stockish dishes to make absolutely sure about it. Okay, well, that'll be for another time. We're gonna go around and use the ion engines this time and see how they work. I will also check boil off here. We do seem to have some, but the it is limited. Seems like these tanks don't have any. At least it's not reading any here. We have hydrogen. Uh, yeah, these two seem... Maybe this radiator fan is doing the job for them. This one has a little, but it's going down. So I think we're pretty well balanced right now. Which is unusual. <laughs> uh, yeah, the liquid boil off... Uh, liquid hydrogen boil off is zero now. It's not boiling off any. Uh, it's a little bit when we're time warping. It reads a little bit of boil off right now. Okay, but we're gonna switch engines and see how we can do. Yeah, make sure we can use the ions during time warp, of course. Okay, here we go. Yes. We are increasing our orbit during time warp. Well, actually, I should check here. Oops. Oh, well, we can check up there. Yes, we are increasing our orbit during time warp. But it's a very, very small amount, so we probably don't want to do that right now. We'll wait until our orbit is high. And we're about to escape. It's much, uh, the ions will be much better when it comes to capturing into orbit around Mars. Now this will need to be refueled in order to have enough to get back. It might even need additional xenon gas or an additional tank of hydrogen to actually make it happen. We'll see what we need to spend here boosting it up first and then we'll see what we need to top off. Of course we already have the space for additional xenon gas so we can do that, but using the ion engines is very efficient except for the way we need to do the maneuvers. It always costs more than you expect, like going to the moon with ion engines, you should expect to take double the normal amount in delta V, but in propellant mass it's going to be still less. So anyway, we'll do most of the stuff with the 
the nuclear engines for now because otherwise it's going to take forever. Since the moon seemed to be getting in our way, we might send it to the moon after all, prior to ejecting out completely. We'll cap we can capture into a light orbit around the moon and then break it. Uh, if we can refuel this thing with a little bit from the moon, that'd be fun. It'll be an interesting challenge. But once we break it, we'll still be in the elongated orbit that's set up for the Mars orientation, so it's not not a problem. The moon happened to be in the right place this time. And actually, it'll, it'll be going maybe two, two orbits of the moon before that thing happens. Okay, well, we're getting up there. Maybe we can go to geosynchronous height. Well, probably not. Uh, just shy of geosynchronous height. I want to reserve the rest. Okay, let's see what Mechchev has to say now about it. Still need 2,400, it says. Now, we originally needed 4,500. This stage was about 2,400, so we've wasted a little bit. But overall, and maybe we wasted about 200 meters per second or something like that. So, okay, and that'll be in 59 days. We'll keep this node present. And now we're going to have to get to this with additional supplies. We don't have enough food, water, and oxygen here yet. We need to load up with supplies, possibly load up with extra fuel, and maybe a, an additional tank even. This one's all out of hydrogen. And maybe fill up the xenon gas. So we've got a lot to do here still. But that's our ship right now, and I'll see what we need to do with that in later videos. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.